Hey there, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at embedding static assets into a Go binary. So there's this proposal here on GitHub in the Golang project about adding this functionality to Go. And in this project, right in the main description, it has a bunch of projects listed here that you can currently use. So these are contributed projects you can pull into your main project in order to embed static assets. And there's a lot of these. And they're proposing here to add a way to do this by default in the main Go project without having to pull in one of these third-party dependencies. And you can see a lot of the different information here. And this is a rather long thread. So if you come down here, you can see it goes for quite a long time. And it looks like this proposal is currently on hold. So in the meantime, there's a technique I want to show you that you can use to embed static assets into a binary. So you can move forward with your project today and get started. So let's go ahead and take a look at doing this. I'm going to go over my desktop and I'm going to add a folder here. So I'll call this embed. And let me just open up VS Codium. And then I'll just go and open a folder. And on my desktop, I'll come here and I'll choose the embed folder and I'll say, okay. Now in the embed folder, I'll add a new file here and I'll just call this main.go. This is our main execution file. And then in here, I'll add the main function. I'll make sure that we're in package main here at the top. And I'll control save this. Now let's imagine we have a file here that's not a Go file that we want to read into our project and then print it out. So for instance, I could create a new file over here. Let me just add a new file called hi. And in hi, we'll have some text. Hello, friend. It's nice to meet you. And I'll save this, Control S. Back in our main Go file here, we could come and we could actually read this file in. So we could use the IOUtil package here and we could read file. And in this file, let's just read hi. If I do a control save on this, it should automatically import that package. So you can see that that's imported up here. So let's come here and let's assign the output of this to content. And for now, we won't do any error checking. So we'll just put an underscore. Let's come and we'll format print do a print line on content, do control S to save it. And you can see that it imported the format package that's for our printing here. And now we can come and let's just open up our terminal. You can do a control in the tilde character and let's build our package so we can do a go build. You can see here that that creates this binary called embed because that's the name of our folder here. And then we can run the embed. So do a forward slash embed and you can see that it prints out a bunch of numbers here so that's because we're actually reading bytes into this content variable if we want to convert that to a string we can actually read we can actually just pass in this string around the content and let me control save that let's build one more time and now we can see the string representation of what we're reading so this works and you might be thinking, well, what's the problem here? We have this static file high here. We're reading it into our project and then we're calling that from our built binary here. So it seems like it's going okay. Now the nuance here is that the binary is actually able to read the file high because it's sitting right next to it in the project. Now what we want to have happen is we want high to be embedded in this binary that we've named embed. Maybe it's a little confusing, sorry about that. So even if the embed file is not right next to another file called hi, it will actually still have access to the information that's in there. So let me demonstrate that. Let's just move our embed file that we have here. That's our binary. And let's move it up a directory onto the desktop. But unfortunately, since we have this folder named embed, we can't have the binary name the same thing because there'll be a name conflict. So let's just call embed instead embed binary. Okay, so if we move that and we actually go up onto our desktop, and we list the files here, we see how we have embed and embed binary. So let's run embed binary one more time. This is what we were previously running. It's just in a different location. And now you'll see that it's blank. So let me just move it one more time. So I'm gonna move embed binary back into the embed folder. And if we go into the embed folder and we run that one more time, you see that it actually works. We can actually get the text. So that's because the high file is relative to where it is in the file system. Now we want this 
file to actually be embedded in this binary. So even if we move it somewhere else, then we're not having an issue with it. And let me just close out this. So we can accomplish embedding this file into a file that Go can interpret, so a Go file, and then have that get built into our binary so we can access it later, even though this file won't be sitting on a file system somewhere else. Now I use that in a project here that I do at Janku. So we have this project called Plenty, and we use a generator essentially to embed JavaScript and JSON and other types of files into our projects. So over here is the first file that you'd encounter. So this is the main file. And what we're doing here is we're running a go generate command. And you do that with a comment syntax like this. So you say go generate. And then we're saying go run a file that we have in a folder called generators in a file called main.go. If you were to take a look at that main.go file, it looks like this is pretty standard. It has a, its own main function. And that runs this generate function a couple different times. And the generate function essentially is just coming in here. It's reading some files and then it's putting those files into a Go file. It's writing it to that and it's converting those into bytes that then can be read later. So once you do a Go build, all that information gets packaged up into that binary and then is available for display later. So over here is the output of that file. So this is the ejected variable and you can see that it's just a bunch of bytes of JavaScript information here. So this is one file representation. You can come down here and then this is another file representation. Here's the content for it and so on and so forth. And then when we run go build, it gets included with our project. So let's do a quick example of showing how to do that in our project here. I'm gonna come down here. I'll clear my back scroll so we can get started. So let's start here by making a new file. I'm going to name this generator.go. You can name it whatever you want as long as it's a go file. And here, let's use package main and let's make a new function. And we'll call this generate. And let's test this out. So let's do a format print line and we'll just print out generated. I'm going to control save that. And you see that it pulled in the format package here for the printing of the line. And now if we go back to our main go, we can add a comment here and we'll say go generate, then go run generator.go. And let's save that. So now when I come down here, if I run go generate on my command line, so you see this error here. So basically we don't have a function main that we're running during our generate. So generate is only running this generator.go file. And in our generator.go file, we have a function called generate inside package main, but we need a main function here. So one thing you might think to do is, well, why don't we just name this main, but that's going to be an issue. So let's just control save that. And let's just try to go build at this point. And you'll see the error here. So we have two main functions in package main declared here, one in generator.go and one in main.go. So that's giving us trouble because it doesn't know how to execute that uh, because there's two of them at the starting point. So you might think, well, okay, well, why don't we move this into a different package? So we'll call this package something like generator. generator and we'll have the main function in the generator package. So if we save that, you see another issue here. So we can't load this package because this is in the same package as main. So again, we wouldn't be able to build this if I were to try to go build this. You see that we have a generator package at the same level that our package main is at. So it doesn't know what to do with these. Now you have to break up your packages by folder. So it's a little strange if you're not used to Go, you can't really structure things exactly the way you want to structure them, but it's simple enough to just basically add a folder here. We can call this folder whatever we want. Let's just call it generator, generators. And then we're gonna move our generator into that folder. So I'm going to move it. And then let's create our package name here as generators to match our folder. And then from there, we now can save this and we have the generators package here. And then we have main.go still here. And we just have to change the path to that package. So now we're inside a generators folder. And then we're calling the generator.go file. If I save this, and generator.go, as we've seen before, has the main function here. So this should work now. Let's come here and do a go generate. So this is saying that we can't run the non-main package. So this actually has to be in its own package main here. So this basically lives as its own little independent sub project here. And now this only gets run on the generator command. So we're not ever calling 
that package from any of our main function. It's only being run through this comment here, through the go generate command. And again, let's save this and let's just try to generate this one more time. Okay, so now we're seeing the generated print line here that we added to our generator. And that runs at our go generate command, keep that in mind, versus the go build or actually executing the binary. So that's running, that's working at this moment. So what we wanna do is we wanna come back here and we actually wanna move our file reading out of our main package here and put it into our generator. So let's grab this information here. I'm going to control X to copy and I'll just paste it in here. And let's make a new variable at the top here. We'll just call this file name and we'll set that equal to high. So that's our file name here. And then let's just use file name here. When we're reading the file in, now let's create a new file here. So we'll do os.create and we'll create a new file called generated.go. And then let's get the output here. And we won't error check at this time. And we wanna to write to this file. So we just control save this so we actually import the OS package. And we're declaring some variables but not using them. We'll use them in a second. So let's come down here and we'll grab out and we'll write to this file. Now this takes a byte parameter, so we are going to pass a byte array. Start with our package, so this is going to be in package main. And then I'll do a new line at the end of that. Let's write another line here, so we'll create a variable, let's call our variable embedded file. And we're declaring this, so let's say var embedded file equals, and we'll create a map that has a key that's string and a value that is bytes, an array of bytes rather. And then we'll define what those actual bytes are. We'll going to start with a new line here. And we basically declared our opening package here, our beginning of our variable, and then we're gonna put a bunch of information in here of this type and then we'll close this after everything has been generated. So come down here, let's write our next line out. So now in here we want our key name to be our file name. So we'll start with our file name here. But we have to wrap this in double quotes. So we can come back here and we have to actually escape our double quote like this, add to our string, and do the same thing on the other side. So we'll use double quotes to escape a double quote. And then essentially what that's doing is it's concatenating this single double quote string to the front and the back of our file name. So we get something with double quote, file name, double quotes. And then we want a colon to be present. And then we want a byte array that starts with our backtick character. And then we're gonna have all the file output and then we'll close this byte array. So let's come here and let's do another out dot right and this time we're going to put the bytes from our file that we read in so that's the content variable and then let's close that byte array so we're going to write one more time and we'll do double quotes and we're going to close with a back tick and then our closing bracket there and then we can do a new line and finally close our curly bracket like that let me save this Oh, and when you're writing your files, just make sure you're not passing straight up strings in here. You should be passing a byte array. So just wrap this like this. And close the bracket like that. And save it. And then come down here, do the same thing for these other lines here. And finally, down here. Okay, so let's give this a test. Let's try to run our go generate command and that will come and it'll run this generator here. And that should create a file for us that we can then go see what the output is. And basically it should be embedding the contents from the high file in a go file that then we can call later. So let's just try to run that. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm going to go generate. You see here that we have a new file here called generated.go. If I were to click on that, you see we have a package main and then we have this var embed file and it has a map with a string key 
and a byte array value. And in there, there's one item here that says hi, and then it has the byte and it says, hello friend, it's nice to meet you. So from here, we can call this value here in a different package, and that will allow us to have the embedded value even though this hi file doesn't actually get embedded itself. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to capitalize this E to make sure that this variable is exported so we can use it in different places. Let me just come back here and let me just change that real quick. I'm gonna save that. And then over here in main.go, I'm going to come here and I'm going to print that variable here. So instead of content, I'm going to print embed file. And now the, the E is capitalized. So I'm going to save it like that. And let's come, let's generate one more time. So you see we have some errors because in the generated file, we still have the lowercase. But if we come and we run the generate one more time, that change it to have the uppercase. And now we can go and build. And it looks like we have an error here. So it says unexpected new line. So we have a new line at the end here, but we didn't close the bracket on that line. So there actually has to be a trailing comma here. Let's just fix that in our generator. Let's just make sure we have a comma right after this. I'm gonna save it. Let's generate one more time. And let's try to build this again. And then we're getting one more error here. So it says it cannot convert the map over to a string. So that's over here in main.go. We're basically just calling this on a string. So what we really wanna do here is we want to get the value from the file that we're interested in. So we can come here and we could call embed file and we could pass the key of high and this will give us the value here. So let's save this and let's build this one more time. And then if we run the embed file, which is our binary, and let's actually come here and let's let's still convert this to a string. Let me add this back in and save and build. And now we're in it. So okay, we're back where we were before. This looks very similar to what we had off the bat, and it looks like we've done a lot of work. So like, what's the real advantage? The real advantage here is again, if we come and we move the embed file. So let's move embed up a directory and we'll call it embed two. And then let's move up a directory. And now if we run embed two, we can still run hello friend, it's nice to meet you, even though that high file is not in this directory. And I'll just prove it by showing the different things here. Okay, great. So I can remove this embed two binary we created. Let's go in our embed folder one more time and let's take a run through this one more time. I know I kind of made a lot of mistakes and ran through some of this quick. So just to reiterate everything so it's a little more clear what's going on. When you build a binary or install a binary on your computer, it looks to your main package here and it looks for a function called main and that's how it runs. There is a special syntax here in this comment where you have a go colon generate command and we're telling that to go run a specific file that we created and we named this whatever we wanted. And this gets executed when you run go generate as opposed to go build or go run or one of those commands. Now, what that does is it goes into this folder here. It runs this file that we have. And this runs like any other file, but since this is running on its own, it has to be in a package main that can be executed. And we're just doing some basic file reading. And then we're writing some information to a file in a format that Go can understand. So we just put this in a map of byte arrays. And then later, once that gets created, so that creates this file here, this generated file, we can then use that information to pull it into other places. So we're pulling it back into the main function here and we're printing the embed file information here. Hopefully that all makes sense. If you wanted to extend this, you could always create a folder of static files and then you could walk that folder and that would allow you to just go through every file and generate this generated.go map here with all the different information. And then you could use those variables by pulling out the specific key that you're interested in using. And that's kind of what we're doing over in our Plenty project that I showed in the very beginning of this video. Thanks for watching this video. If it helped you out at all, please give it a thumbs up just so YouTube knows to share it. And stay tuned to our channel for more content like this in the future. All right, take care.